Hey Slayers, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going over my first ever TBR for the fall. Say hey to Gracie, I'm currently watching her. You better watch your hair with that fire, girl. This is my first ever TBR. I was gonna do for October, but I'm at like 20, 21 books, I think. So yeah, we're gonna expand this to the entirety of the fall season. Will I get to all these books? I don't know, but I think it's also just a fun way of potentially giving you guys some recommendations for yourself for what just sounds good to you, I guess. I do like love the idea of like being like a seasonal reader, listener, personally do audiobooks. But yeah, will I get to all these books? Unfortunately not. I mean, I will. I just don't know if I can do 20 books in two and a half months, especially with how late this is coming out. I actually did one short story novella so far, but we'll get there. So here I'm going to be getting into booktube, author tube, and lifestyle vlog content. Kind of whatever feeds my soul slash, I guess, what you guys like the most. So if you like videos like this and the booktube vibe, please give this a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new comment below. So I actually have the book set up in different categories so you guys can search through this video yourself if you don't want to hear all the recs I guess, which you're lost, but whatever. So I have Buffy Verse, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. If you know me, you know the show Buffy isn't just my favorite show. Like it's made me who I am today, like creatively. The book that I'm writing is heavily inspired by Buffy, but don't worry. I only have three Buffy Verse books. So the categories I have is the Buffy verse, witches, vampires, forces of darkness, aka like ghost, demon vibe, and then romance, and I have one self-help book at the end. I'm gonna put that one there. Okay, so I'll start with the Buffy verse, but what's kind of cool about these three books is you do not have to watch the show at all if you're just looking for a witch, vampire, or slayer type of vibe these are two prequels and then one is post the show but you don't really need to know the show and i also think it could be like a fun way to get into buffy even of course too like these aren't canon to the show it's kind of fan fiction i guess first is bewitching hour this one i'm definitely the most excited out of the three buffy books Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan favorite gay icon Tara McClay gets a main character treatment in this YA prequel full of 90s nostalgia, mystery murders, and star-crossed romance. Tara is one of the best characters on Buffy. She doesn't come in till season four. She only has like one Tara-centric episode. We know like not a lot about her backstory, but I believe she's from Ohio. I know that her mother died and was a witch. We never know anything past that. Like, she doesn't talk about the mother ever, and we don't know how she dies. So in this prequel, I'm assuming those questions are going to be answered, which is just so cool as a fan. The only thing I'm extremely disappointed about, and this is just for the Audible, it's such a missed opportunity that Amber Benson, who plays Tara, isn't the voice actress. Because she actually does a lot of audible books and stuff. But funny enough, another one of the mentions later on, she's narrating. So it's kind of just, it's kind of like weird. <laughs> okay, so next is Bloody Fool for Love, which is a Spike prequel. It's an exciting new prequel series about Buffy's infamous bad boy Spike. Fresh from a slayer killer fame, Spike plans a daring heist in London's demon underworld to win back Drusilla's affection. Full of dark humor, action, paranormal intrigue, this novel offers a bloody good time for Buffy fans. Oh, that sounds like such a Spike prequel book already. I'm so excited for this. He's killed two slayers in his past. That's fleshed out storyline on the show. So it's cool that it says fresh off his his slayer killing fame he's known for that in the supernatural world he's a real big bad next is 
Slayer, which I believe takes place after the show's ending events. So like 2003, which is cool because it's like a Y2K vibe, maybe. Slayer follows Nina, a reluctant student at the Watchers Academy, who unexpectedly becomes the last Slayer in a world forever changed by Buffy. As she grapples with her new powers, Nina must confront dark forces, a shadowy, figure haunting her dreams and protect those she loves from looming danger. This thrilling spinoff blends action, supernatural intrigue, and a fresh take on the Buffyverse. So this is really cool that the concept basically is she's the last Slayer to be called ever, I guess. Very intrigued to find out what that means. Is that true? Is she really the last Slayer being called? Because what's going to happen when they're all dead? Next up is Witches which I which I shockingly only have two book recommendations shocked I thought I was gonna have the most witchiness okay I totally just thought of another book that's been on my TBR that I don't have written down that is a witchy book that I must read soon but company of witches I feel like we see that around a lot I've forever seen that on like my Instagram promotion like going through like swiping through stories this would always pop up as Gilmore Girls meets practical magic and I'm basically sold just from that obviously I don't know anything about that book other than the Gilmore Girls description and that's all I need. (laughs) Like I just go based off vibes. I low-key go based off the book cover. I think book covers are so important. I do judge a book by its cover. (laughs) Next is The Rewitched. This one came out recently. It's a thrilling paranormal romance where witches must fight to reclaim their power while navigating love, betrayal, and magic. This one I believe doesn't have an audiobook so I'm going to attend attempt to get a physical copy. I'm gonna make a vlog going to the library and this is on my list of physical books that I'm gonna be getting mostly due to it not being audible. Um, I really hope I get around to it. Again, I love the cover of this one and she will be read. I just don't know when exactly. Next was a recommendation I found from Darling Desi on YouTube. Obsessed with her. I just literally discovered her. Slufa? I don't know if I'm saying that right. It's a dark atmospheric folk horror set in the 1600s New England where a widow must confront ancient evil and reclaim her life. To be honest, and I feel like this is a an unpopular opinion, but I don't really like period pieces. I don't like watching period pieces. I don't know how I'm going to feel in the sense of books totally open to it i'm really new to expanding my horizons in general so i'm excited to see how i feel a book is totally different like i can see it in my head the way that i'd like the way desi described it she really hyped it up for me those were my witches category next is vampires which i'm writing a vampire novel potentially a novella so hopefully in the future my vampire book will be in your tbr until then impact winter this is the only one that is a straight up audible immersive journey like this isn't a book like it's made for audible which i think is so cool that they're literally starting audible series this is called impact winter a post-apocalyptic tale set in a world frozen over where survivors must battle not just the elements but blood thirsty creatures in the night i know that there's two out right now like seasons if i like this one of course i'll get into the other one i believe too the these are only four hours ish the first part and the second i really think i'm gonna like it the vampire knitting club uh, lucy swift travels to oxford for a fresh start only to discover her grandma is now a vampire and has left her a magical knitting shop when lucy learns her gran was murdered she's determined to find the killer while juggling a 600 year old vampire a charming detective and a cat that might be more than its 
seems. This cozy mystery is full of quirky characters, paranormal intrigue, and plenty of yarn. So yeah, it sounds kind of weird, but I think I'm going to really like it. So this next vampire book is actually going to become a series, which I'm super excited. I don't have the description because I want to go into this one completely blind. And realistically, the title kind of just gives an overall feel of what you're getting. It is the Southern Book Club Guide to slaying vampires period being southern and vampire slaying vibes it's making me think of true blood but i don't think it'll be like as like spicy i don't know oh shit it's coming to hbo hell yes and it's a comedy series next i've been seeing a lot from booktubers actually and that is master of death fun urban fantasy where a real estate agent who happens to be a vampire, must team up with Death himself to solve a mystery. So I think it's like Death's godson. In order for this real estate vampire to sell this haunted mansion, they have to solve the death of the ghost who's haunting the mansion. And that is just 10 out of 10 to me. Like, what a fantastic concept to me. That alone in itself, I wish I had thought of that. Next is Fang Fiction, which is brand new. A hilarious vampire parody where a young girl's fan fiction about her favorite vampire series accidentally becomes real. I heard there's a lot of pop culture-ness in this, and this is the book that is read by Amber Benson, who is Tara and Buffy. I'm super excited about that, too. I don't know how I'm going to get through all these, like, in this one freaking season. Like, who do I think I am? But yeah, I think that one's a very silly, goofy one, so it might not be your vibe, or it may. The next section is... Forces of Darkness, Ghost, Demons, etc. Okay, next I actually read already, we'll listen to, it came free with Audible, and that is The Halloween Tree. It's a kid's book, and I found out there's a movie, and honestly, I had trouble, like, paying attention. I was very, I think I just, I guess, wasn't into it, because as, like, a children's book, like, I feel like it should have been easy to follow, but for some reason, it wasn't for me. I definitely want to watch the movie, even though I wasn't really crazy about the book. I just want to, like, fully understand it for some reason it's an eerie time traveling halloween adventure where a group of kids must save their friend by learning the true meaning of the holiday halloween next is the girl in white a chilling story about a 12 year old girl who must face down the most notorious ghost in her haunted east coast town to stop a century old curse i like the east coast small town vibe this is a YA as well so I'm learning if I'm going to be into YA but I feel like that might be a good start. Next is the Graveyard Book. A whimsical tale of a boy raised by ghosts balancing eerie adventure with a heartwarming coming of age story. This may fall in the same vibe as the previous book but I love graveyards. I love a cemetery so much. They literally give me life and just the idea him raised by ghosts. I believe he's a human so like he just probably goes to the cemetery and like talks to the ghosts or like his whole life. I love that concept. So I'm really here for it. Next is The Haunting of Aveline Jones, a spooky middle grade. What is up with me with these middleness? A spooky middle grade story where Eveline, am I even saying her name right? Discovers a mysterious ghostly tale while staying in a small seaside town. I believe this girl like it has to move in with her aunt and she's not like happy about it. Shit happens. It's giving the same vibe as the girl in white. Next I believe was inspired by Buffy so I'm very excited about it. It's called The Village Library Demon Hunting Society. A fun and quirky read about a group of misfits who band together to protect their small town from demons hidden in book. Love the concept. I love that it says that it's fun and quirky. Like, 
It's giving Buffy. That one's probably going to be high on my TBR, honestly. Next is another one that's like big in the booktube world, which is Phantasma. Phantasma is a maze of twisting corridors and lavish ballrooms of demons and temptations. Ophelia will face nine challenges, each more dangerous than the last. So for some reason, I didn't feel like too drawn to this one. And then I watched One Girl and I I think she was like couldn't find like a good book and then she was totally obsessed with this and it mainly inspired me to put it on my tbr um, i definitely want to get to this one but i don't know how high it is in my like ranking next my friend sam is actually reading the series now my thing with starting this is a they're long and b it's a series and I have so many books that I want to get to that like I'm afraid to start this one because I feel like once I would start the series like I would want to continue it into the end and then not get to anything so I might hold this off and like maybe make a whole video on the series altogether like a reading vlog documenting me going through each series. So yeah, it's Throne of Glass. In a land without magic, where the king rules with an iron hand, an assassin is summoned to the castle. She comes not to kill the king, but to win her freedom. Looks good. I know my friend rated it pretty high, I believe. I love the cover. It's actually giving like a vampire slayer, but assassin. So I love that. Next, the only book that isn't fantasy. I believe it's a horror thriller. I'm obsessed with Buffy, guys. Buffy's name is Buffy Summers. Her last name is Summers. So I squealed when I saw that Stephen King wrote a book called Billy Summers. I wasn't in my reading era when it came out and when I saw that it wasn't like supernatural I was like all right like I'll get to it one day and that one day is coming up soon. It's called Billy Summers, Stephen King's gripping thriller about a hitman with a moral code who only takes on jobs targeting truly evil people. I feel like that's a bit of a trope. I love when for example Dexter he's a serial killer but he's only going after evil evil people like it's the same thing right so maybe it's like stephen king's dexter that kind of just made that more interesting currently watching dexter now i was hoping a little more but i'm really excited because sarah michelle geller who plays buffy is going to be in the prequel series so i have like two more months to finish dexter these next ones have nothing to do with buffy so i can close that chapter and these are romance and i guess most of these actually aren't fantasy either these are really cozy fall romance vibes but the first one is <laughs> fantasy and it's called spookily yours a paranormal romance set in a haunted inn where a ghostly present helps two people find love i love an inn a ghostly inn like yes sign me up period that's all i have to say next is fall for him which I believe is about two gay guys. So this is a gay love story. It's actually the only gay book. Love if you guys could give me some recommendations on male gay romances. I just recently listened to They Both Die at the End. I'd love a less morbid gay romance. Fine with cheesy, but a lot of them just seem straight up not good, which is unfortunate. Okay, so this is Fall for Him. This autumnal love story explores the deep connection between two souls as they navigate the complexities of life, love, and letting go. I believe this is enemies to lovers. We love that trope. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited about that. I'm going to speed this up because my camera is dying and I'm really taking so much longer than I expected. Um, the next, I believe, came out this year, which is super popular right now. And this is high on the TBR because I feel like it has to be in October when I listen to this. I believe it's set in October and that is called the Pumpkin Spice Cafe, a sweet and cozy romance set in a small town cafe where love is as warm and comforting as a pumpkin spice latte. I believe like this bitch like takes over for this cafe for the fall season and like it's the story of that. Hey guys, sorry about the switch up in quality. My camera died so I could set up the microphone but we're just gonna bang this romance section out, you feel? Okay, three more to go. 
Two more lovey, one self-help. This one is very high on my TBR. It's not autumnal. It's part two of a series that is what got me into like even wanting to really delve into this journey of booktube and like listening to audibles and stuff like that. So it is the second book of Done and Dusted, which is called Swift and Saddled, a contemporary cowboy romance where love and second chances are as wild as the rodeo. So I wanna say that this follows the main character's brother and his romance. I freaking loved it. There's gonna be four total. This is the second one. I believe it came out in April, and then book three is coming coming out in November. So I might save this one for November and, and listen to them back to back. And then the final book comes out, I wanna say like March, April next year. Yeah, I'm very excited. I've been very in the mood for like a Western vibe and I feel like it's very like straight guy coded Westerns. So to have like a small town Western-y romance, I'm loving it, honestly. I can't even believe it's taken me this long to get to it, but just life has been lifing. So the final book in my romance category is The Boyfriend. A romance where a fake boyfriend scheme quickly turns into something deep and more real than either party anticipated, which is definitely like a typical trope, I would say, but one that I enjoy. The last is the self-help, and I have a podcast with my friend Lex and co-host, Young Millennials. Check us out. You can listen to us or watch us on our YouTube channel. We're doing like a monthly book club as of now. Over there, we're gonna be focused on like non-fiction, self-help, motivational type of books because I feel like that's good for like a podcast discussion and stuff like that. This one I am very excited for. It's called Attached, a psychological deep dive into attachment theory and how understanding your attachment style can transform relationship. I think specifically romance, but probably relationships in general. <sighs> I feel like I probably suffer with some attachment in that sense. Yeah, I'm very excited to see what this book has to fucking say to me. So. Yeah. All right, guys, that was my first TBR. My next TBR video, I'm thinking I would like to do more like monthly. So probably starting in January, um, I do have some like Christmas books that are on my TBR that maybe I'll just do like a Christmas TBR section of like a future vlog or whatever. Yeah, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. I will see you guys in a new video very soon. It's been